Welcome to Mosaic. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I, I hear an announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, standing at an opposing height and weighing in at an awe-inspiring 235 pounds. Here he comes, a force to be reckoned with, a colossus of the canvas, the one, the only, Pat Rose. Let's go. Welcome to Mosaic Minds, the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. training to be a pro wrestler we were getting ready he went to the cornbread festival music and all that and we're standing there and i'm doing this and i'm saying damn son look your dad's freaking uh, going away yeah <laughs> how y'all doing man doing good man hey, good, good. Man. good. Where, now where, where are you out of i am in trenton georgia okay. uh you ever heard of lookout mountain i have not I am at the foot of beautiful Lookout Mountain here in Trenton, Georgia. You look to the uh, right, uh, and you see Cloudland Canyon, just outside Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, that's God's okay. country there. That's pretty. perfect. Probably the, probably the best right. climate of that's all of Georgia. Right. All right, man. Can I take this thing off? Yeah, okay. you can take it off. Did the <laughs> trick, though. <laughs> did did the work, man. Did the deed, man. That's, that's what it's all about. Oh, so. I love it, man. Now, that mask is the original mask I wore uh, teaming with uh, Mr. Wrestling 2. Uh, if you don't know Mr. Wrestling 2, he was one of the, one of the top mask wrestlers in his day, the 80s. Uh, that's when I come up, 79 to 94, and I got the tag with my childhood hero. Now, I wrestled here in Trenton, Georgia, and on my gym bag, on the bottom of it, I had taped a picture of wrestling, too. So, when I would have wrestle-offs, and I'd have to wrestle about five different guys, and I would kick their ass every week, and I guarantee I can still kick their ass today, but... uh, I don't know, some kind of power. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Look up C2 and I'll come on, brother. Here we go. You know what I mean? It probably seems surreal. If you were, you know, you said your childhood hero, so I'm sure that you must have watched wrestling all the time. So it probably seems surreal to be a part of that. You know what? I was sitting at WTBS uh, in Atlanta, and that's the superstation, Ted Turner's deal. And, uh, I'm sitting there, and, and Paul Orndorff sitting beside me, right? And I had just finished my match and getting dressed right out of the shower, or whatever. And Paul Orndorff's putting his pants on. And I look over, and I said, well, damn, he's just like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one leg at a time. Just, right? <laughs> that, that just settled me down. You know, used to, I'd look at Paul Orndorff or Wrestling 2 or Dusty, as mega heroes, you know what I mean? And that moment just calmed me down and it was it was balls to the wall. I think that's, that, man. I think that's awesome. Mr. Wonderful. I mean he uh he he wrestled all the time in the big events back oh, in the day and I, I yeah, think I think man. you're right with that. You know, any sport in general, I think it's all about the heartbeat, you know, the the anticipation, you know, hey, I've done this before, it's slowing down a little bit for me. You know, I'm a step ahead. I'm not as nervous as I would. So, uh, did exactly. you did you get your start as a, as a youth? Was it a lifetime goal? I'm going to let you speak on how you got your start in the wrestling circuits. You know what? I started wrestling at eight. At, excuse me, in the eighth grade at Eastside Junior High. I tried basketball for about a day and quit and went to wrestling and uh, wrestled at uh, Dade County uh, Lakeview. Uh, uh, and then finished up at Dade County where I live, uh, Dade County, Georgia. 
And, uh, man, I've always loved wrestling. I went to wrestling when I was 12, and I seen uh, Jackie and Don Fargo. And, and what got me into working out and having a body, I mean, I don't now, but having a body was Don Fargo. Oh, my God. He was muscled up, and I got to be good friends with him. I got to be good friends with Jackie Fargo. I got to be part of the new fabulous Fargos that I put together, man. Heck yeah. Because I love those guys. And sorry. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you just a few seconds, man. Uh this is this is a. Uh... This is actually special to me, believe it or not, because uh, growing up in northern Indiana, man, we needed we needed to wake up Saturday morning at 7.30 in the morning just to watch that. Now, <laughs> now you're a pioneer of the day, man, so I think you're good now, but oh. I think I think transitioning into what it's made today, I mean, it's great to see some of those uh, famous names from that day, so I'm going to let you take it from there. You know, uh, French Lick, Indiana, freaking uh, Larry Bird's hometown. That's right. I wrestled in that gym. Oh, there you go. Uh, cool. There you go. Yeah. Larry yeah, Bird yeah, Boulevard, man. right up the road. We fish at Patoka, right up the road. That'll be another topic. Really? But that's uh, that's an hour and a half from where we're at. Just so you know. Oh, that's that's cool, man. Yep. But you know, my son, and I, I don't remember your question, but I'm gonna ramble on. My son is training to be a pro wrestler. He's been. He's, he, he started playing drums at three years old. He's a good drummer, plays for the church, plays for bands. But he was front man when he was 14. Just got a text from Gerald Swindle. I got his shirt on. He said, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, but G -Man. he started playing music when he was 14, front man. And he's got three songs out, the whole deal. But he's come to me and he said, Dad. And I've tried to keep him away from it, but he said, Dad, I want to be a professional wrestler. And uh, I said, okay, son, because it's not my life to live. It's his. If that's what he wants, I'm going to help him. Yep. And we've already used him in an, in a, in an angle. And y'all, I'll smarten you up to that off the air in an angle with him getting, he was singing the national anthem and this guy comes out, his name's Drago from primetime wrestling. He looks like Lex Luger made over brother, but he's Ukrainian. Okay. So he's the Ukrainian flag nails Camden. Camden takes a perfect bump down. gets back up, nails him again. He hit him. Got a hard way right here and started bleeding. So here comes dad. I'm covering Camden, right? I'm covering it. He grabs me by the ponytail. I got long hair. He grabs <laughs> me by the ponytail, nails me, hits me with the flag. So I start bleeding. So, oh my God. And the only reason I did that was to see what Camden would do, how he would handle it. Brother, he was great. That's cool. On the mic, he's great. I couldn't speak when I first started wrestling. I was like, rrr, rrr. but Camden is good on the mic. And now I've been I've been letting him train with a, a kid named Jaden Newman, which is a great wrestler, best power slam in the business. But I've been letting him train with it the, with them, and I haven't went. Because I didn't want to go. I want him to get smooth and get comfortable. And then dad's coming and going to put the finishing touches on it. And if you don't do it right, don't do it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I'm old school. Yep. It's flip and flop now. And a lot of guys are getting injured doing all this high diving stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank God they got catchers. When they bounce off the top rope and turn a flip and land outside, oh, here, I'll catch you. That don't mean nothing, right, man. Right, it yeah. looks pretty. Yeah. It looks pretty, and people like it, and wrestling changes. And I understand that. But I'm old school, buddy. Give me a story. Yeah. 
Make that old lady in the front row mad at you, wanting to hurt you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Heal, heal it up a little what, bit, rough around the edges and stuff. What absolutely. would you? What What would you say uh, is the is the line where of wrestling versus the versus um, almost like a stunt man? Like where Where's the line there? Because I know there's actual. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, it's all acting," but there, I know there's there's like real wrestling involved. So. I mean, what, where, would, where would you say the line is there? And is it different now than it was then? You know what? I don't think there's any lines now. Yeah. It's it's whatever you... It, oh, my God. <laughs> Jump off the balcony <laughs> onto a table onto your back. Why? Now, here's what Bill Dundee... You ever heard of Superstar Bill Dundee? I have. Yep. Well... Here's what superstar Bill Dundee told me. He said, and, and I would do the backdrop over the top row. Uh, that's about as, as freaky as I got. But Dundee told me, he said, Pat Rose, if you don't slow down, you ain't going to be walking time you're 50. Yep. And it's the same way with these younger kids today. I mean... I get I, there's an, I can't knock it because it changes, but dead gum guys be careful. Yeah, it's not worth it if you can't work. It's not worth it if you're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And it's like Does that. that make I mean, sense, guys? Yeah, yeah, and it's like that in a lot of a lot of co physical contact sports too. You know, I mean, some people take it take it to the extreme, and you know, they're worth to where they can't even put two sentences together because they've messed themselves up That's so right. bad. Pat, I would say like a, a name from my childhood was like Brett the Hitman Hard. And my and my my honest opinion of a guy like that, I think he's a wrestler. I think he's a tactician. I think he does some exciting stuff, but he's he in my opinion he's a good tactical wrestler. Not a oh. high flyer that does backflips and you know some of some of the stuff that you see now, it's like what excitement do you get about, you know, busting yourself through a picnic table, you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> I, I, I get there's I get there's cool value to that, but at the same time, you got to protect the body. Uh, I think there's a lot yeah. of value in that. So yeah. now your son, just to just to throw this out at you, we've known each other now for ten years through the fishing crowd, which is how we met each other. Exactly, and uh, not not a not a small statured guy at all. I mean, your son right now, you know, I'm, I'm I'm a bigger guy myself, but I mean, he he can really hold his own on the football field on the wrestling ring. Talk to him a little bit about the aspiring career that he has right now. Well, you know what? Uh, Arn Anderson told me a long time ago, he said, and, and I was getting out of shape, it is why he said this. He said, Pat Rose, don't smarten the people up. Bottom line, Pat Rose, you look like shit getting a gym. <laughs> you got to look the part. You got to have the arms. You got to have the shoulders. You got to have the chest. And back in the day, only ten years ago, did I know I had a freaking peak because I I done a pose on Dothan TV with wrestling too, and I watched the video. It's on YouTube, and and you know how you do a little picture thing during a video real quick. I didn't realize my arms were that big. If I would have known that, I would have been worse than I was. <laughs> I mean, I was in shape, man. I couldn't believe it. But saying all that leads to this. Camden's got to get in the gym and work out. And I've been taking him. He's consistent. He had about a week off. He had a few shows and this and that, but we're back. And, you know, like I told him, if you lay out, it's that much harder and you're going to be sore all over again. Yeah. So he's working out real good. Uh, we're, I'm the general manager of Primetime Wrestling in Rome, Georgia. So he has an opportunity to, to train with some good guys and uh and and uh, again train with Jaden newman but what we want i want to send him to tom pritchard you know who tom pritchard is i don't educate me on that one 
Okay, Tom Pritchard and Kane. Uh, what's his real name? Jacobs. Anyway, they have a wrestling school, and it's the number one wrestling school in the country. Trained a lot of guys. The Rock, uh, John Cena, jeez, uh, Randy Orton. You know, I know they come from Ohio Valley, but Tom had something to do with it. So I want to send him to Tom. Can I show you something? You ready? Yeah, yeah. fire away, man. At 19 years old, uh, wrestling for Nick Goulas here in Chattanooga, here in Nashville, uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, at the at the Gardens. Um, I won this when it was Rocky Brewer. We beat Wayne Ferris and Larry Latham for the NWA Mid America Tag Team titles. You want to see it? Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's see, see that. That's a replica. But it's a replica. Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. You know where I got this? Where's that? Pakistan. There is a guy <laughs> named E A A A A D, however you pronounce that, that makes these. And this is it's just like the real one. That's crazy. It's, yeah. It's just like the real one. Now, you want to see one that me and Randy Rose held? In oh, 84, yeah. me and Arn Anderson. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, Let's nice. See it. The crown. Cool. That's Heck, bad. yeah, the Southeastern Tag Team That's Champions. That's bad right there. Okay, baby. Heck, yeah, man. I'm proud of those. Those go to Camden. Hey, Pat, what would you say is your most memorable match was? The one that comes back to memory. Is and it and it always does is uh, the new fabulous Fargo's me and Marcel Pringle managed by Don Fargo, uh, Expo Hall, uh, Mobile versus the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson. Uh, it was a dream match, and every time I work with Ricky or Robert, they're great, man. They're great. They're great. Yeah, that one. Is there another one? Probably Tom Pritchard, Pat Rose, Sherry Martell versus the fabulous ones, Memphis, Tennessee. Sold slap out. Semi-main event. I, they come to see us. I don't care who was on the main event. They come to see us. Bottom line. <laughs> now, I think, I think Jason told me that you actually wrestled The Undertaker also, right? I did, man. I did. And that video is on uh, is on YouTube, and you can see. Okay, here comes the under dang whatever, and and I'm up there, and they're introducing me right, and I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and Vince picked up on it. He said, "Oh, Pat Rose, he's uh, he got he took a big gulp or something." Oh my God, it was great. And the funniest part about that, the funniest part about that, he pile drive me one, two, three. Then he puts me in the body bag. They didn't show that part. And then he over the shoulder. Yeah. And I'm saying, man, get me out of this dead gum bag, man. I'm freaking out. Get me. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, trying don't... to be still. And I'm saying, get me out of this bag, Mark. And he, he kind of steps it up and gets it's funny, man. That's a great funny memory stuff. there that you mentioned because I wouldn't have mentioned it, but you told the story so great. But I guess what I'm going to talk to you about just real quick is is you gave me cold chills when you were experiencing that because, like, the example that I'm going to give you, being a wrestling fan but a basketball player, you know, I had a half-court buzzer beater, right, to win a game in a small sold-out arena, and I'm talking about 300 people. You're talking about tens of thousands of people, man. But I guess, I guess what was cool to me, and I almost teared up when you were telling me, is – is you're so detailed, I can live in that moment even though I wasn't even at it. That's and I think true, that's yeah. just – I just think that's phenomenal coming through and hearing mm -hmm. hearing that memory just like it was yesterday. If I'm guessing, man, maybe put me in that, but, you know, could you smell the popcorn? Do you, do you know the lights? I mean, all of that probably comes full wow. circle for you when you talk that's about this. That's funny you ask that, man. And it goes back to Tulsa, mm -hmm. Oklahoma at the fairgrounds, Mid-South Wrestling. Stole out. I mean, 
you couldn't get another soul in there. And I tell Camden this all the time. I said, son, and I'm getting cold to you. Swear to God. <laughs> but anyway, you look out and the people are close. You look out and you don't see faces. You see people. Does that make sense? Yeah, like it like does. on a like on a video game where you look up and yep. you can't see you just see yeah, these little you, like the little bodies or whatever. Yeah. Yep. That's it. And you look out and you're like, dang gum. And it's just amazing the feeling. You want to work hard. And I always worked hard in professional wrestling. If Jimmy Cornette says Pat Rose was a good worker, he's a good wrestler. I'm a good wrestler, Jimmy Cornette said it. Exactly, with the, with the <laughs> tennis you know racket, I mean? right? With the tennis racket. Yep. Hey, let me let yep. me plug this. Yep. Uh Jimmy Cornette drive through, Jim Cornette drive through, episode three ten. Go there and uh, listen to the story he tells about Louisiana, man. Episode three ten. And uh, oh, it's funny. I did well. Just go there and you'll see. Now, Pat, this kind of dates me a little bit, and I know it's a little different circuit, but I want to kind of walk you through Fort Wayne Coliseum, nineteen eighty seven. I'm nine years old. I got to watch the Macho Man jump off the top rope and hit Steamboat with the belt. And as you well oh. know, Steamboat uh, talked like his larynx had a hole in it for about six to eight weeks. So he was he, really? he was talking in a in a graf, gravelly voice and a kind of a pissed off voice. So that's uh, that's one of my favorite memories. Uh, oh. I watched Orndorff, uh, George the Animal Steel is who I tried to emulate. You know, I'd eat the popsicles and try to act, you know, <laughs> act kind of crazy and <laughs> and uh, eating the turnbuckles and stuff. So those are some of my uh, best memories there. Ultimate Warrior, Honky Talk Man. Uh, I see uh, through a little research, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you uh, wrestle Hacksaw Jim Duggan in about 94, 95 there in WCW? Oh, my Lord. Man, I love Duggan. You know what we do? We'd go to the buildings, and if I got there first, I would look for him. And I remember standing up on this thing. Here he comes around there and say, Jim. Boom. And then I'd go back, and then he drops <laughs> his bag, and we start going, boom, boom. Why would we do that? But we had a blast. We did it every time we seen each other. Love Jim Duggan, man. Love Jim Duggan. And if you notice on Georgia Championship Wrestling, when I first – Started here with Nick Goulas in Chattanooga, 79 to about 80. 80, he shut down, maybe 81. 80, he shut down, and he sent me and Bobby Eaton to Atlanta. So one of my first matches was Jim Duggan. And guess who had a freaking interview? Bruiser Brody. Oh, that's So I'm standing in the ring, uh, me and Jim Duggan. Bruiser Brody at the mic with Gordon Sully. Here comes Jim Duggan after me. He grabs me, a, a turnbuckle, slam on the diggum floor, beats me up. Boom, I'm laying there selling. Oh, my Lord. But Jim, uh, Bruiser Brody, I was in Trinidad, Tobago with Bruiser Brody. And, you know, he and I, I was actually with Ron Starr. And Ron Starr passed away, and I owe him a lot, man. He made me the world's junior world's champion. I'll tell you about that, too. But uh, Bruiser Brody, conversating with him and hanging out with him, he was sweet to me, man. I love Bruiser Brody, and I hate the situation with Jose and him and Carlos over in Puerto Rico. It, it's bullshit, and uh, – Damn. What situation what are you, what situation are you are you referring to? Bruiser Bruiser Brody getting killed in Puerto oh, Rico, okay. getting stabbed by Jose Gonzalez. Wow. And I've wrestled Jose Gonzalez many times, man. And Well that kind of answers the question. I was gonna ask, is it you, you were talking about how much fun you guys had. Was it typically pretty good camaraderie between all the wrestlers or were there a oh, lot yeah. a lot of real life rivals? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, man, we loved each other. It yeah. was fun traveling with Brad Armstrong, Dutch Mantel, 
Who else? Cornette and the Midnight. Uh, Marcel Pringle. We just had a blast. Don Fargo. We had, I mean, you got to you got to do something traveling from one night you're in New Orleans, the next night you're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the next night you're in Oak City, the next night you got to come back to Alexandria, Louisiana. Yep. So you got to do something or you freaking freak out. Nick's got a name for you here, Nick. I want you to mention that name if you remember the Pringle name. Remember the re the uh, manager? Uh, the per Percy Pringle, the Paul Bearer? Per yeah, Percy Pringle. Good person, man. He's passed away, but love him to death. Got a picture of him and used to hang out with him and Marcel. Uh, Marcel is from Mobile, Alabama, and he is Percy Pringle's cousin. And part uh, uh, Marcel can speak just like Paul Bear, man. He's he's that good at articulating, you know, what he wants to get across. Did I say articulate? Hey, you man, did, I'm, I'm man. impressed. You did. <laughs> right to that point, <laughs> man. Hey, perfect segue. You like how I did that, right? But uh, you're absolutely right. Some of the some of the better wrestlers can speak behind the mic, and I think there's a lot to be said for the guys that can speak behind the mic but they're not as good at wrestling, if that makes sense. Because right. I know I know for sure that certain circuits kind of beefed up the guy that kind of had the full package, if you will. So, I exactly. mean, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right, though. I mean, I think speaking behind the mic is – you may want to debate it a different way, but I guess what I'm trying to articulate, you know, uh, with that is, is what I'm trying to say is, is I think if you do both, I think you go up through the ranks a little quicker and you're more that – because I I don't want to throw out specific names, but I think there's specific names that are kind of phenomenal behind the mic, but just okay at wrestling. Because I believe it or not, I can look at a tactitional wrestler like I look at um, I look at the Hitman, like I told you. Um, I know there's some wrestlers that names go unsaid that they hurt people, they rough people up, you know, because their character. But they're they're they were a little bit rough around the edge. Like I really like how Ric Flair sold, to be honest with you. I mean, you'd hit him, and then three four seconds later, he's falling. Just a great, you know, gr great on the screen, great behind the mic. Um, let's switch topics a little bit. Uh, that's been down memory lane, and then we're going to uh, button it up uh, with a little more wrestling. So you've got a jersey off to straight behind you, Swindle. Tell tell your best swindle story, and then I'm going to tell a funny swindle story, and then we'll we'll kind of kick off fishing a little bit. <laughs> now, you know where you got this shirt, and you know what it means, right? Educate me a little bit. I thought scope used to be a mouthwash. They're talking about live scope okay. on the electronic. Yeah, yeah. That's swindle selling these, so I had to get one. Uh, I went down. I went down to his place and we were hanging out in his little where he parks his boat and just crap all over the place. And we were doing a little promo about giving away hats on set to the Pat Rose. And it was like, he would say something, I would say something. He would say something, I would say something. Trying to get out of it, right? And finally, I guess, you know, he got he got what I was trying to do. I was trying to sign off. You, you follow what I'm saying? Exactly. And we just laughed about that. But Swindle's a good guy, man. He is. He's real, uh, and, and and I'm real. And what I mean by that, I always had Mark Zona. He always told me. He said, "Pat Rose, be real. They will find you out." So I'm real. Yep, if that's you want to know something, I'll tell you. Yep, that's you know what, what I mean? always respected. You know, when I met you 10 years ago, you always just, you, you talked to me like I had known you for 20 years. You weren't trying to big time me. You would already no, establish yourself. All, and honestly, we hit it off pretty good. My funny swindle story is in Noblesville, Indiana. He was at a fishing show, and he was, <laughs> in, he was in a booth signing autographs, right? Right. And I'm just a little guy, you know, up and coming, trying to do what, what I do, you know, which is get a few baits out there and shake some hands with some professional fishermen and things. So everybody's faced towards his booth, but everybody can see me. So I was stopping the crowd and I was like, it's such an honor that you would wait in line to see my baits 
and people would look at me and they, they, they didn't want to hurt my feelings and say, I ain't looking at your vates. I'm looking here to get Swindle's autograph. And then I did the same joke on him and he laughed. And I was like, I was like, gee, man, you know, like what, what's up, man? You got, you got kind of a winter coat on here. And he's like, yeah, I'm not used to this 25 degree weather. He's like, when I came here, it was going to be like 45 and it was 25. You Hoosiers threw me a curveball. So he's, you know, freezing and stuff first thing in the morning. But I agree with you, man. Humility with him, humility with you guys. You know, it's, it's nice to see that you've done some great stuff and that people are just relaxed and you're able to communicate with them. So talk to me a little bit about um, your jersey there on uh, our right there, the set the hook. Tell me a little bit about that platform. Uh, people know about it, but for those that are listening to us for the first time that maybe don't know about it, talk to us a little bit about that. Man, I appreciate that. And we've actually changed colors this year. We were all black because I've always been told black makes you look slimmer. I don't know. <laughs> That's the reason uh, I got that on. Yeah, me too, me too. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We changed colors uh, this year, as a matter of fact, went to red. And that's one of the best-looking jerseys I think I've ever had. Uh, What we do, we've been doing Set the Hook with Pat Rose 16 years. And it all started in church. Uh, uh, um, What's his name? Evan Stone come up to me and he says, Pat, why don't you come down and do a segment? So I cut, he owned a radio station. So I come down, done a segment on the radio. It was 10 minutes and I'm writing down, I wrote down all this stuff and I'm thinking, okay, I'm good, man. I got, I got enough stuff to talk about. About five minutes in, I was done. You know what I'm saying? So we started a radio show and I started having guests like uh, Bill Dance, Ray Scott, Jimmy Houston, uh, you know, all the legends are on set the hook with Pat Rose. And what got me in with these guys, hey, man, uh, you a wrestling fan? Well, sure. Well, I'm Pat Rose. Oh, you're kidding, really? So that got me in the door. Now, if if I go, hey, man, I'm Pat Rose. Oh, okay. <laughs> go a different route. You know what I'm saying? You got to go a different route. But I use that as much as I can. If they buy it, they buy it. If they don't, they don't. And then I'm thinking, okay, I've got these guests. I'm going to Chattanooga. So I went to, uh, let's go to ESPN. ESPN 105.1 The Zone. Uh, Stayed there for years. Went to Fox, back to ESPN. And now we're on 36 radio stations across the country. Wow. Plus, we do it in a podcast and go to Set the Hook with PatRose.com, SetTheHookWithPatRose.com, and you can see all the uh, podcast platforms that carry Set the Hook with Pat Rose. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll put that in the the description, too, so that people can... Yeah, and I want to plug plug your guys' stuff, too. Oh, yeah, we'd appreciate that. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Pat, now correct me if I'm wrong. When I when you had me on about eight to ten years ago, it was a small bait manufacturer. It was a WWF or wrestling in general high caliber name, and then you had a high caliber fishing on. Is that still kind of your format, or have you kind of switched the format up here lately, buddy? I own the show. I do what I want to do. <laughs> do whatever the hell you want to do. Love it. Love it. If I want to talk to this guy down the road at Moe's Grass, I'm going to have him on. Exactly. If I, what I try to do and what we were successful at doing uh, because of contacts, and it's all about contacts, we just had this week, we had Justin Hamner on, 23 Bassmasters Classic World Champion. Yep. So anytime somebody wins a tournament, I can call and say, hey, man, can I get you for radio? Sure, brother, let's do it. Because they've heard of us. A lot of the guys have heard of us. I got Pete Pons and Denny Brower liking my stuff all the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that means a lot, man. Absolutely. Those are the top guys in the sport. Kevin Van Dam, good friend of mine, got to interview him on Channel 12. Now, what Channel 12 is... It's WDEF TV 12, where Nick Goulas wrestling was every Saturday. Look what I got, guys. This is the microphone oh, that sweet. Harry Thornton used to use on that show. 
Uh, I've got pictures of Jackie Fargo, and this is how this is how Harry Harry helped. You know what I mean? Yep. But uh, I got pictures of Jackie Fargo talking on this mic and a bunch of other people. That's cool. But, and that's the uh, actual. That's the feel, actual mic. That's the actual mic. Oh, that's man. killer, man. Is that not cool? That is that's cool. really cool. And I had a guy in Ringo that run the Ringo Opry. He knew I was a wrestler, and he said, "Man, I got something for you." And Camden was playing a show in Ringo, and he walked up to me and handed me that. I'm a crier, man. Yeah. I'm a crier. I fell down, started flopping on the ground. No, I'm just kidding. Like that. <laughs> you got to sell it a little so, bit, right? You got to sell it to oh, the crowd. I, yep. it. Exactly. I, I was exactly. appreciative, man. Thank you, Tom. I was appreciative of that, man. You know Not what's really much. cool, Pat, about our format? Like uh, Nick and I discussed this, and um, just so you're aware – we actually look at like uh, arts and kind of pop culture. We do. We're trying to do a little music, but we're doing a little sports, and then we're doing fishing. You're on, obviously. We've had a guy from the NASCAR circuit, but it's amazing to me the people that want to be on to get their um, their stuff heard, known, and stuff. It's just imagining that you know I would have never dreamed in my life that I'd be friends with Dick Vitale online. Basketball oh, announcer. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I Bob. That. I mean, you know, you said G. I love you, man. You mean, you, mean you, you know, G Man is on there. You know, listening to you on be on behalf. You know what I mean? But it's just nice. Yeah. It's it's nice because we're that guy. I mean, I'm not too prideful with you, man. We're that guy. Like, well, who's this guy messaging me? Well, that's me, right? But as we're building up and we're building an audience and we're building a following, we're very we're very candid with it. We're on here to present you in the light that says, hey, maybe you're getting in front of a few people that you don't. And it was phenomenal just to see, you know, the belts and the memorabilia because I've I've been fascinated with wrestling for 40 years now. I mean, I'll never I'll never not watch it and follow it and know a little bit. Now, I don't want to go too old school on you, but I liked it 20 or 30 years better than today. But I'm not I'm not downing today's by well, no means. I'm and, just saying and, it, and it, it was better. And I agree with so. you, and here's mine. The stories were more personal. Let me give you an example. Lynn Rossi, big star here in Chattanooga. This is the 70s. He was in a car accident. And he, he came out in a wheelchair to do an interview with, with Harry Thornton. Terry Garvin's and Duke Myers and Jimmy Garvin, Garvin's and Myers were the heel team. Blonde hair. Uh, they, they're hated. So here they come out, right? And and Jimmy says, oh, I remember this like it was yesterday. Jimmy says, Terrence, Duke, is this not the great Lynn Rossi? Oh, man. And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I don't remember how they got to, to beating him up, but they beat him up. He fell out of the wheelchair. They're putting the boots to him. <laughs> Oh, my wow. God. And then here we go, Saturday night at the auditorium. What does it do? Spells out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just personal stuff like that, man. Come on. I, I think I think just hearing the excitement in your voice, you know what I mean? Because I never would have dreamed in a million years that I'd be behind, behind a microphone. You know, when I first met you, you were already behind the mic. But uh, I had a tear-up moment uh, that I shared with Nick. Uh, 25 years ago, I went to broadcasting school, right? I'll tell you off air why I never went into broadcasting. But 25 years later, I'm talking to people. Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'll tell I'm, you I'm why. I'm looking for it every Sunday. You know, it's it's booming and making it happen. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Man, I'll tell you why. You won't make any money. You've got to own your own shit, man. Yep. Yep. You've got to own your own stuff. Yeah. If they want to play your show, that's fine. I'm not going to pay you to play my show. I'm going to give you some minutes to promote your stuff. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and you know, I've, I've been fairly blessed with that. And, again, hey, I'm Pat Rose. Are you a wrestling fan? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. Yeah, well, so, you know, you got to go a different way. You got to talk business. I think but I've looked, you, I've looked this podcast up, man. You guys are big time. 
Well, Pat, well, we've only been growing. doing it a month and a half. I'm going to let Nick speak on it a really? little bit. I think he had something. Yeah, we've yeah, done this a month and a half, to be honest with I, you, man. I have wanted to do a podcast for the longest time, and I I knew that we had the disadvantage of not having a niche, because we really don't, you know? But I think that it can also be an advantage, because, you know, you can get more of a, a wide crowd. And actually, oh. Jason, Jason pointed that out. But I think it's all about authenticity. And, I mean, you are clearly an authentic guy, you know, like – so yeah. I'm sure that your show does does really really well because I mean people want to hear they don't want someone that's you know sitting behind a teleprompter and just you know just spewing off what they know is the politically correct thing to say and that's why we didn't want to do you know we put on our we rarely have an episode that would be considered explicit but that was one of the big conversations right. we had at first was you know we want to go ahead and check that box you know why because we don't want to have to be filtered you know like we want to say. Whatever comes to mind, you know, we we want to we want to say it. If we have want to have a guest on there that's a little controversial, oh well, you know, don't listen to that episode. But I mean, that's um, I think that's what it's all about. And I can tell that you're passionate and you're an authentic guy. And I'm I'm a, I'm actually excited to I'm going to definitely listen to your to your show because I'm kind of excited to hear it now. <laughs> I think it's interesting that we were able to hand you a baton and you ran with it. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to let you kind of hop in there. Let me let me mention something. That we do and been doing it since day one. First, we open up with the national anthem. At the end, we close with this right here. Matthew 4, 19, and he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Here's the catch to it. The greatest catch that you and I can make is when someone gets hooked. On the love of Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. Boom. Now, wow. when they start saying, Pat Rose, you can't say that. We move on. You know what I mean? We move yeah. on. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. And and that's why that, that solidifies. I mean, that makes that makes perfect sense to me because when you start when you start censoring what's important in the thread of our country, that when it gets the little 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 off character yeah. to me, right? So I, I agree with yeah. you 100. Yeah. Well, we, really, the main purpose that we wanted to do it for was honestly something to do, and it was some good camaraderie that we could have between each other because we, you know, we work together. So you know, it's kind of something that we're like, you know, let's 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 do this thing, and um, it's just really interesting. And I'm really fascinated by different walks of life. You know, like I, I may not agree with it, but I like to learn about it. I like to know what's going on. So. Well, it fascinates me to have different kinds of people on. Um, again, whether I agree with her or not, in my, in my opinion, that's what makes our country great is the fact that we can all disagree but still shake hands at the end of the day. Pat, he's a exactly, big uh, he's man. a big musical guy, so he'll play '90s, 2000s, you know, alternative grunge. He's the music guy that I always wanted to be, and I always tell him that I have no musical talent at all. So the oh fact that he God. does that in the technical What's the side. Song Camden plays. Is there a song named Blurred? Or blurry, oh blurry face! I bet, yeah. Um, Who I can't, plays I it? I can't think of the. <sighs> anyway, Camden plays My boys it. Are da, kill da, me. Da, 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 something like that. That's... Camden plays that song with his band. Man, they get down. Yeah, yeah. That's a. That's a. I, I mean, I. I just think it's phenomenal that you know, regardless of talent, because you know, I respect you in fishing. I respect you in wrestling. You know, our, our, you know, some of the people that I talk to, which is a totally different road for you, but you know, I, I play pickleball, so I know pickleball players. We've had a Hall of Fame basketball. Really? We've had a Hall of Fame basketball player. Oh yeah, I, pl I play that to stay in shape, man. I like to, I like to hunker down at the buffet, so I got to play a little pickleball, so I'm not even bigger Bro, than what I, I am. I want to do so. pickleball, man. One of Camden's. Uh, Talent buyers does pickleball. I want to do that. It's That'd great because it, it, anybody really can do it. I, he had me out when I'd never done it before. I took my boys and and he had me and my sons out and we did a little pickleball <laughs> clinic and we were, I mean, we felt like we knew what we were doing by the end of the you know by the end of the really? day. So yeah, yeah. To be honest with you, you would be shocked when I tell you this. That's some of the best networking you can do because you'll play with a twenty year old male or female all the way up to a seventy five year old male or female. So the networking is through the roof. So I never thought we'd Love talk pickleball it. on the fishing and fishing and uh, WW. 
Um, what would you uh, What would you wrap up with? Give us one more memorable story, or uh, I want you to do this. Go into one more match so we can kind of see some insight and, and be there with you during during a match or an experience <laughs> you've had. You've had. I want to do that one more All time. Right. First time I went down to Georgia Championship Wrestling in Atlanta, WTBS Superstation. Uh, I seen my name on the list versus Dusty Rhodes. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, again, a superhero to me. Uh, I love Dusty Rhodes. I wish I could talk like Dusty Rhodes, but he's got that <laughs> yeah. corner. Yep. So I'm wrestling Dusty Rhodes. So I'm, I'm filling out what he wants me to do, and he's taking his stuff off, and he goes, and I wasn't even coming close to him, right? So I knew to do that. Then he, you know, he got up, you know, whatever. And I got a picture of me and Dusty. All right, I'm locking up with Dusty, right? And and it's like this. You, you follow <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm so sure. Exactly. And Dusty, Dusty's so tall. But he does the big elbow on me, one, two, three, proud to do it, man. And and I got to know him when he was booking for WCW. I got to talk to him and, and Dustin. And I uh, used to go in the ring with Dustin and take his belly to belly just to practice. And I didn't mind, man. Come on, let's go. And uh, Dusty was a, was a good person. And that one hurt. Wrestling, too, hurt. Golly, let me tell you a story about wrestling too. <clears throat> and then we'll end it if y'all want to. I'm at a show with Camden at the Brew House in Rome, Georgia. Uh, he was opening for Chase Baker. So I get a phone call, and it's John Walker Jr., Two's son, and it's FaceTime. And I said, hello. And Camden just happened to be there with me. And I said, hello. He said, hey, man, dad just wanted to say hi to you. So he puts him on. And we're staring at each other. And I said, too, man, I love you, buddy. And he couldn't really speak because he was crying. And then I started crying. And I, I love you, too. Love you, man. And then about a week later, he passes away. Did he know that was happening? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Did he know to call me? I love wrestling, too. I feel like we're more uh, kind of in tune seeing, seeing you and like getting to know you a little bit more. Because we always have to talk in passing with all due respect to you because you got to hustle to your booth. I got to hustle to, you know, away. So I think it's been awesome. And hopefully we can uh, come in contact when we're in your neck of the woods or vice versa and shake hands and, you know, break some bread, you know, have a steak or whatever and uh, just kind of talk and hang out a little bit. That'd be great. May 23rd, I will be 60 freaking four. Years old. Do I look sixty four? No. Do I talk sixty four? No. See that. Do I dress sixty four? That's how I feel. Heck no. <laughs> hey, I, I tell I tell Jason and everybody else is all the time because I, I turn I, I've turned forty four here in about a month and. I like to think that I don't look 44, right? And I certainly don't feel like it. I have this thing where I, I'll go into work and I feel like I'm impersonating an adult. You know, I'm like, you know, like at any moment I'm going to be discovered. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I'm sure, I'm sure that I will feel the exact same way because I mean that's kind of how I feel now. Hey, Pat, brother, life. I was, go ahead. I was thinking on you about. Early 30s. Oh, 32, thank you. 33. You look great, man. <laughs> thank you. Hey, Pat, I'm going to leave you with this, man. You told me some powerful stuff. The 64, man, I'm going to give you uh, kind of a glimpse of my life. I lost a friend when I was 15, man. It was a neighbor of mine. Played basketball with him. His football number was 64. So I'm going to tell you right now, man, it's a blessing to hear that number. Give him a memory. His name is Randy Hughes. I want everybody from my hometown to realize that We still think about them. Yeah, of course. It's just hard. Yeah, I mean, 
you're you're putting his uh, you're putting his legacy out there right now. You know, absolutely. And that that was powerful to hear some of the people that you had come in contact with and the legacies that they left. Because sports, you know, the example that I give and, and it's hard to hear is is you know I'll I'll never play basketball on a competitive level again. You know, but the fact that you know when I was at a junior college trying out with seventy five guys and I made it to the final three and didn't make the yeah. team. That tells you that you have it. So sports is sports is that footprint on your heart that you'll never be able to leave. You'll never be able to change those relationships. You'll carry on for the next twenty or thirty years of your life. So this has been this has been phenomenal, man. Yeah, this, man. Great this interview. Been, great interview. This has been uplifting for us, and uh, we see where your heart and your mind is, and we wish you nothing but continued success. You know, tip of the cap to you, and uh, keep killing it on and off the off the court and in the ring, man. Man, this is one of the, the the best interviews I've done in a while. I appreciate the emotion. I appreciate the reality. Uh, man, thank you guys so much for having me on your show. Man, thank I mean, you. Man. Thank you. Hey, I can't be overly formal when I say this because we don't have a formal call out, but I'm going to tell you this, man. We live in the greatest country in the world. Uh, totally agree. I, I pray for the leaders, the law enforcement, the leaders of our country doesn't matter where you're at politically, whatever creed, man, if we're flying that uh, stars and stripes and we're respecting people, just like you do at the beginning of a fishing tournament, everybody's standing, even if you're getting your gear and trolling around, you're, you're looking at what's important. So I, I, I do want to leave kind of as a tribute to you, but more importantly, I think that needs to be heard by our audience as well. And uh, just keep killing it and we'll we'll cross paths sooner rather than later, man. Good luck to your son too. You know, like I, I if he has half as much passion as you do, I'm sure he will be big in wrestling. You know what this means, right? Love. Love you guys, man. Y'all be good. Thank you for having us, man. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. You too, man. I like, appreciate it. Hope to talk to you again. Bye bye.